क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फ्रॉम इकीडा Hello friends in today's session we are going to study about a topic named electrodialysis electrodialysis is a process of making water in its purest form it is not about converting hard water into soft water it is about taking a water sample which contains certain impurities and these impurities are very small in size and to take away such impurities we use semi permeable membranes we'll study what exactly is semi permeable membrane and the entire process of electrodialysis in today's session <music> electrodialysis we also denoted as ed electrodialysis is an electrochemical process now what exactly is an electrochemical process electrochemical processes are those processes where electricity and chemical both of them are used together for example if there is a chemical reaction and that chemical reaction is happening because of the given electricity that is given change in the potential difference then that process can be known as an electrochemical process again if there is a chemical process which produces electricity then even that process is known as electrochemical process so due to electricity if chemical reaction happens it's an electrochemical process or due to a chemical reaction electricity is produced even that is an electrochemical process electrodialysis is one certain type of electrochemical process in which ions migrate through ion selective semi permeable membranes now what exactly are ions over here if i write sodium this is a sodium atom but if i put a positive charge on it it becomes an ion if i write chlorine cl itself is just a chlorine atom but if i put a negative charge on it it becomes an ion so na plus becomes my positive ion cl minus becomes my negative ion positive ions are known as cations negative ions are known as anions they migrate through ion selective semi permeable membrane now let us understand what we are talking about over here i have a water sample that water sample has certain amount of membranes in it that water sample contains certain ions in it it contains na plus ions which are cations now these cations are present in water cations are extremely small in size na itself has 11 electrons when it donates one electron to something else Na has ten electrons now, and it becomes a cation that is positive ion Na plus. That means the positive ion Na plus is smaller in size as compared to the original Na atom. Na atom itself is very negligible in mass and size, so Na plus ion will be smaller. And these ions cannot be removed by the process of boiling or any other kind of filtration processes. And for that, we use semi permeable membranes. Now, what exactly are semi permeable membranes? Semi permeable membranes are those membranes which have extremely tiny pores inside them, and through those pores, these Na plus ions or any other ions can pass from one place to another place. If I have a water sample and I put a semi permeable membrane in the middle, the ions will pass or flow from one end to another end through this membrane which is present in it. that is known as a semi permeable membrane and this logic is used for electrodialysis process now over here i have a water sample i have a semi permeable membrane but i want the ions to flow from one end to another end and this flow cannot happen on its own because all the ions all the atoms all the molecules are in random motion in a water sample to make them flow from one end to another end we will have to put some kind of charge and that charge is electricity when we provide potential difference in a certain manner the positive ions will flow from one direction to other direction when they'll flow from one direction to other direction they'll pass through the semi permeable membrane and then once they pass through the membrane we can just collect those ions from the other direction and make the water sample free from those ions semi permeable membranes as a result of the attraction to the two electrically charged electrodes now these electrodes over here can be positive and negative so over here if i have a water sample i can put two electrodes over here and there can be a potential difference which is given a semi permeable membrane and the ions will flow from one end to the another end ed that is electrodialysis is able to remove most charged dissolved ions charged ions are important either positive charge or negative charge is important and they have to be dissolved in water 
contaminants treated by ED. ED is useful for making water free from metals such as barium. Barium, the symbol of barium is BA. Either barium can be dissolved in water as it is or in the form of certain ion. Selenium, nitrates, nitrites and TDS. All of these when they are present in water in extremely small quantity, in extremely small size, in dissolved form, using electrodialysis we can simply remove them. So here we have a diagram and that diagram explains the entire process of electrodialysis. If you see over here there are semi permeable membranes, cation selective membrane and anion selective membrane. As I told you ions are divided into two parts, positive ions and negative ions. Positive ions are known as cations, negative ions are known as anions. So over here, these two membranes over here which they have pointed that is this one and this one. That means this entire membrane and this entire membrane are my cation selective membranes. That means through those membranes the cations will flow down. If you see over here, there are positive ions flowing down from here and there are positive ions here as well. That means these ions are getting concentrated and that concentration is eventually removed from the water. This is another anion selective membrane. This is the anion selective membrane over here and anion selective membrane over here. And because of that, all these are anions that is negative ions coming and flowing down. And because of these flow of negative ions which are flowing from here to here, even they are getting collected in the concentrate and they will be removed out. The examples given over here for cations are Na+. Plus Ca++ that means Na has one positive charge, calcium has two positive charge. Instead of writing Ca++ we can also write Ca2+. When you look at anions it is Cr- minus and CO3-. Minus minus. That means Cr has one negative charge, CO3 has two negative charge. If you all see nitrates, NO3 is one minus hydrogen is H+. Plus. So all of these which are present in the form of impurities in the water can be first dissociated into a positive ion and a negative ion and then those ions can be taken out with the help of semi permeable membranes. Now how exactly do these semi permeable membranes work? They work with the help of electricity and thus over here if you all see I have a negative pole and a positive pole. This negative pole and positive pole provides potential difference and that generates current which is electricity. If you see over here there is saline feed water. Now what exactly is saline feed water? This is the water which contains all my ions over here and this is the water which needs to be purified. And this has an inlet over here. When you see the inlet there are positive ions as well as negative ions present in it. And we also have a brine solution. Brine solution is nothing but my NaCl. NaCl stands for brine. NaCl solution over here and this is the feed water channel. The positive pole and the negative pole give the electricity and hence it is known as direct current source. You can either name it over here or over here. Both of them are nothing but direct current sources. Description of the process. Now let us see what exactly happens when this electrodialysis happens. Over here we have taken the example of a saline water which will contain certain ions in it and certain impurities in it. There is pre-treatment first. Initially scale inhibitor is added to prevent scaling and to reduce the concentrate of LSI below 2.1 in the concentrate stream. Now whenever we have saline water or any kind of impure water, that water contains certain amount of ions in it. And we have to reduce the LSI. Now what is LSI? LSI stands for saturation point. That means if my water is saturated with ions, it will be very difficult for me to separate out those ions through a semi permeable membrane. Because there is a capacity that semi permeable membrane can work. It cannot work above certain levels and that level over here is 2.1. That means I'll add certain inhibitors to it. Those inhibitors will actually go into the water and start reacting with those ions, making sure that they can make certain types of precipitates through the ions which is present in it. For example, I know that I have a water solution that contains many Na plus ions. So I can add in certain amount of chlorine and make a few NaCl molecules inside the water. This NaCl salt molecules can be easily precipitated out later. This can help in bringing down the LSI point and we need to bring it below 2.1. After the water has the LSI point below 2.1 is when we can actually start with the electrodialysis process. Residual chlorine concentration of 0.5 mg per litre is maintained to prevent biological growth. 
Now, it is very important that there should not be any biological growth. What are biological growths? Microbes, bacteria, certain kind of viruses, all of them grow in water. Why do they grow in water? Because water molecule is H2O. It contains oxygen. That means growth of microbes can be done with the support of oxygen present in it. We do not want that. That is not desirable. And that is the reason why we'll have to stop the biological growth. That can be done by reducing the chlorine concentration of 0.5 mg per liter and maintain it as well. And the H2S hydrogen sulfide is removed by using cartridge filter which is 10 to 20 mu m or air stripping ED or EDR. Now these are certain processes which help us in removing the hydrogen sulfide, the dissolved hydrogen sulfide present in water. Let us see the principle of electrodialysis. Electrodialysis is a process that depends on the principle that most dissolved salts are positively or negatively charged and they will migrate to electrodes with an opposite charge. Let us take an example. The most simple example is NaCl. So when I use NaCl, NaCl, Na is positively charged, Cl is negatively charged. Another example can be CaCl2. Ca, Cl, 2. Ca is 2 plus. Cl is 1 minus. But since we have 2 chlorines, it will become 2 minus. So again, this is 2 positive, 2 negative. In this way, any salts which are present in water, generally salts are made up of 1 positive ion, 1 negative ion, or various positive ions and various negative ions. So these salts can be easily dissociated into water because salts are nothing but polar solutes. Water is a polar solvent. Polar solutes get dissolved into polar solvents and form ions. And because of these ions, we can use the electrodes, we can give the electrical energy, the opposite potential, and make the ions flow from one point to another point. And this is the logic electrodialysis use. Thus, electrodialysis uses selective membranes which are able to allow passage to either anions or cations. Now, what do I mean by selective membrane? I know there are only two kinds of ions, a positive ion and a negative ion. One is cation, one is anion. If I have a membrane only for one kind of ion, it will be much easier for me to take the concentration of that ion and remove the concentrate from the water. Instead of keeping semi-permeable membranes which allow both the ions, it will start eventually allowing the salt itself. We do not want that. We want that particular kind of ion to come and get concentrated so that we can remove it. The other kind of ion can be removed by another semi-permeable membrane. This process is known as selective semi-permeable membranes. Some semi-permeable membranes will only select cations through it. Some semi-permeable membranes will only select anions through it. That process is known as selective membranes, which are either for cations or anions in an alternating fashion. So if I have a cationic membrane, after that I'll have an anionic membrane. After that, again cationic membrane, then again anionic. So cation, anion, cation, anion. And this goes on for four or five membranes. We'll show this with the help of a diagram. If you look over here at the diagram, you can see that there is written cationic selective membrane and it points over here to this one and to this one. That means this is one membrane and this is another membrane. If you look at this anionic selective membrane, it points to this one and this one. That means there is anion first, then cation, then again anion which is over here and lastly again cation. Now, how does this help? If I have an anionic membrane first, the anions will pass through it and then the anions will be trapped in that semi-permeable membrane and then they will go out in the form of a concentrate. What remains in my water sample now is only the cations. Those cations are for this semi-permeable membrane. This is the second semi-permeable membrane. The cations will also go away. Then again, I have an anionic semi-permeable membrane that is for remaining anions. If at all there is certain amount or small amount of anions which are remaining over there, they will pass through that. And finally, the last cationic membrane for remaining cations. In this way, all the anions and cations will pass through because of the electric current and whatever water is remaining will be pure and will not have any kind of cations or anions present in it. The anions are able to pass through the anion selective membrane but are not able to pass through the cation selective membrane, which blocks their path and traps the anions in the brine stream.
and because of this four semi permeable membranes the cations will get blocked the anions will get blocked then again the remaining cations will get blocked and lastly the remaining anions will get blocked all the cations and anions get mixed in the brine stream and finally we throw off or wash away the brine stream whatever remains is just pure water similarly cations move in the opposite direction through the cation selective membrane under a negative charge and are trapped by the anion selective membrane the same thing happens to cations as well a typical ed system includes a membrane stack with a number of cell pairs each consisting of cation transfer membrane and demineralized flow spacer and anion transfer membrane and concentrated flow spacer so all of these are the apparatus which are needed for an ed to set up for the ed plant to set up compartments for the electrodes are at opposite ends of the stack the electrodes are continually flushed to reduce fouling and scaling let us see the waste disposal of the same the concentrate waste steam electrodes cleaning flows and the residues from the pre treatment process will be a part of a typical waste now before the entire process starts we have a pre treatment process in this pre treatment process we add inhibitors to it this inhibitors will go and will start reacting with the ions and try making precipitates out of it the precipitates we get out of it are filtered off but the filtrate that we get on the filter paper is nothing but waste so the collection of waste should start from the pre treatment process from the very first process and then we shall go to the electrodialysis process that is the exact process wherein also we have a brine solution in which the ions are mixed and that entire solution of brine with ions are considered to be a waste and even that waste needs to be treated typical waste stream flows and will require disposal common disposal methods include surface water discharge that means you will just discharge the water evaporation ponds the water content will get evaporated and whatever filtrate is remaining that we will dispose of in some other way etc spent membranes will also require disposal that means the membranes which are already used the semi permeable membranes which are already used and cannot be used further even those membranes are considered to be waste and even that has to be taken care when we talk about the wastage disposal the benefits of this process ed can operate with minimum fouling or scaling or chemical addition the only chemical addition we do is the first inhibitor chemical addition in the pre treatment process and the secondly is the brine solution brine solution is nothing but an nacl solution and that is the reason why we do not have much chemicals required or needed in it low pressure requirements we do not have many requirements while setting up an electrodialysis plant the next benefits we have over here is electrodialysis facilities are quieter than ro ro is reverse osmosis reverse osmosis is also a semi permeable membrane process but electrodialysis process is much quieter than the ro process long membranes life expectancy the semi permeable membranes we use the selective semi permeable membranes for the cations and the anions both of them have long life expectancy that means they are being used for a long period of time and that is the reason why we do not have to recycle or use the membranes again and again and it can operate with up to 0.5 ppm of free chlorine in the feed water to control biological matter in the feed water that means along with removal of ions we can also take care that no biological matter that is microorganisms bacteria viruses etc are being cultivated inside the water by just reducing the chlorine content to 0.5 ppm or mg per liter so we are in today's session we studied about electrodialysis the entire process of electrodialysis the pre treatment of it the principle on which it works the entire process and the benefits of it we also studied the wastage disposal of it as well thank you so much for watching this video stay tuned to ekeda and subscribe to ekeda